Hey, small groups of Fellowship of the Parks, man. Welcome to week five of Better Together. Man, you guys are almost there. In the past weeks, we've talked about just connecting with one another, how to, how to better grow together. And this week, we're gonna cover a really important topic, and it's called serving together. Why is this important? Because it was important to Jesus. In the weeks leading up to his crucifixion, he, that's one of the big things he taught about serving one another, about loving each other enough to serve one another. In fact, he, did, he demonstrated this by washing his, his disciples' feet. And when we serve together, you know, we can serve individually, but serving together as a group, then you multiply everything that God has given you. And you can be more effective than just serving alone. So this week, I want to cover four key aspects for groups that serve together. And the first aspect is this, the first point is this, groups that serve together make themselves available. I mean, this is, this is key. You could have all the talent in the world, you could have all the spiritual gifts in the world, but if you are not available to use them, it doesn't matter. Your number one ability is your availability. Yeah, I know we have busy lives. I know, you know, we always say, man, I, I don't have the time for that. I can't make the time for that. Your, our schedules are just really, really packed. But here's the key. When we say we can't make the time to serve, it's, it's really wrong. It's technically wrong. Nobody can make time. It doesn't matter who we are. It doesn't matter what we do, what our title is, what our income is. It doesn't matter. And everyone has the same 24 hours a day. We can never make time. We never can generate another hour. We can't have a 25th hour or 26th hour. The one thing that you can do, though, is you can make yourself available in the time that you've been given. And look, serving has, has a couple different types of serving, right? Especially here at our church. There's scheduled serving. It may be a little easier to, to swallow, right? Because you could say, hey, you're going to work in Kids Inc. Uh, on this particular Sunday at this particular time. Or you're going to serve coffee. Or you're going to be part of the worship team on these two Sundays every month. And a schedule. We could put it on our calendar. And, and we could say, man, I could do that. Because I, I, I have it on my calendar. It's scheduled. You know, but the thing is, when you, about making yourself available, even for your scheduled serving opportunities, um, man, you got to make it a priority. That's what making yourself available means. That means nothing's going to stop you from doing it short of an emergency, that it becomes the number one thing, that you'll meet your commitment. But the other one that's a little bit more difficult, I think, for us to, to, to handle are the unscheduled ones. The ones that usually come with a phone call, maybe late at night. Or the ones that come with a text message that says, you know, Jim and Sandra are, are having a hard time. Can you help them? And man, it's the ones that kind of blow apart our, our finely tuned schedules. And what we need to do is we need to make ourselves available. And we need to, really, it's about a change in mindset. And this is what, what really kind of what, what the Bible talks about, that your ability to love one another your ability to serve one another, even if it inconveniences you, we got to look at it differently. It's not an inconvenience. It's an opportunity. All those phone calls or a text message that comes in for an unscheduled uh, opportunity to serve is an opportunity that, that you can experience God. You know, every Christmas I, I go through the, the scriptures that talk about the Christmas story, and I'm always amazed at Mary. And this was an unscheduled opportunity to serve God when God, when the angel knocked on her door essentially and said, look, you need to give birth to the Messiah. And she could have said, this is not a good time. I'm planning a wedding. I got bridesmaids dresses to, to pick out. I've got a venue to figure out where to have this wedding. Maybe after the wedding I could do it. But no, she makes herself available. She says, yes, Lord. 1 Peter 3.13 says this, Who is going to harm you? And here's the key. If you are eager to do good. I know you can't say yes to everything, but are you eager? And you know, I, you need to make yourself available. We need to be eager to serve one another. 
and not just as individuals, but as a group. And that really brings us to our next point. Because groups that serve together work as a team, as a team. If you, as you look around at your group, you know, some of you may have known the other people in your group for years, yet some of you, this may be only the fourth or fifth week that you, you've known somebody. But here's the thing, as you look around, yes, it's a bunch of individuals, right? And God has created each and every one of us uniquely. There never will be anyone like you. There never has been anyone like you. God has given each of us an individual shape, not just physically, but kind of as our, our whole. And shape, I'm gonna use that as, as, a, as an acronym, as an acrostic, where the S stands for, man, we're all given a spiritual gift. And the H means we're all given a particular passion, and that passion may be different from the person sitting across from you or next to you. You know, something that really kind of tugs at our heart. That's what the H stands for. And we're all given completely different abilities, aren't we? We're all good at stuff. And it may be different from what, again, that person next to you is good at. We're all given different personalities. Some of us are introverted, some of us are extroverted. And there's nothing wrong with that. And the ease is key. We're all got different experiences. We all have different hurts. We all had different victories along the way, different backgrounds. We're brought up differently. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because when God creates us uniquely and gives us all different shapes, what a team is, is we take those uniqueness, that melding of the individuality of each person, and we strive towards a common goal. Look, if we were all exactly the same, it doesn't work, does it? If we were all created exactly the same and, and, and had the same exact shape, the same gifts and heart and ability and personalities and experiences, guess what? Only one thing gets done. You can't have a football team where everyone's a quarterback. You can't have a basketball team where, man, it's just a bunch of outside shooters. We've seen some past Maverick teams, and that didn't work out too well. It is when we have all different experiences and all different um, strengths and weaknesses, and we put those together towards a common goal. That's what a team is. And a team celebrates and utilizes those differences. So a good team, number one, we realize that people are different. And number two, we celebrate those differences and we utilize those differences towards that common goal. In Ephesians 4.16, the Apostle Paul says this, From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does, it work, does its work. Just look at our body if you want to know what a team is. It is made up of diverse pieces and organs, and, but all of it works together to build you up as a person. Another hallmark of a good team is point number three here, that groups that serve together think more about others than themselves. And this works really in two directions on a, on a good team. It's both inwardly focused and outwardly focused. And what I mean by outwardly focused is when we serve others, the people we serve are more important than us. We think about them more. You know, if you've ever been on a mission trip here at Fellowship of the Parks, one of the first things I tell mission teams is, man, this is not a vacation. It's a mission trip, not a vacation. Why? Because as soon as you treat it as a vacation for you, all of a sudden the accommodations aren't going to be that meet your standards, and the food is not going to be good enough for you, and it's going to be too hot, and the work is too hard. We're working too long. A mission trip, when we serve others, is all about, look, it's all about the people we're serving. And that's a completely different paradigm shift. So think about others more than we think about ourselves. That's what a good team does. Philippians chapter 2, verse 4, from the message uh, paraphrase of the Bible, says this, I forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. Just deny yourself a bit here. 
But equally as important, especially as a group serving together, is we need to look inwardly at our team. In other words, you got to think of your team members more than yourself. If you see somebody struggling, encourage them. Pat them on the back and say, man, you're doing a great job. You're doing a great work. If somebody needs help, even though that's not your area, you have the opportunity to help them, help shoulder their load. Be willing to fill in for somebody else. In other words, your attitude is, look, the team and the goal is important. My individual comfort, it's not my job, it's not the right thing to say. It's, it's been what I, I need to do whatever it takes. Hebrews 10.24 says this, Consider how we may spur one another towards love and good deeds. And finally, point number four is this, groups that serve together, do every task with equal dedication. In other words, man, there's no two task that's too menial, that's too minor, that's beneath you. Man, every task is important on a team, right? Everything needs to be done. Whether it's emptying the trash or whether it's, it's uh, cleaning a toilet, it all needs to be done. There's nothing beneath you. And we have the number one example because Jesus himself, man, he majored in those minor tasks. Before he was crucified, he, he washed his disciples' feet. And that, is, that is, was as a demonstration of what he wanted them to do and what he wanted that team of disciples, that group of disciples to continue doing. And Because washing feet was a menial task. And this is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Messiah, stooping down and washing manure and mud off people's stinky feet. There's no task that's too menial. Mark 9, verse 35 says this, If anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last and be the servant of all. So you got to be willing to do whatever task you are tasked with that's in front of you, that's working towards that common goal. And you do it with just as much dedication as if it was something that you love doing, even if it isn't. And it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what title you have at your workplace or what your income is, what your bank account or what your house looks like. The bottom line is this. You need to put this in your head. It's not, it's not my job. Or that task is not something I want to do. It's how can I help? How can I help? And when you're given something, whatever it is, do it with everything you got, with all your shape that God has created you with. And the bottom line is this, everything matters. God notices all of it. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10 from the New Living Translation says this, I will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other Christians. Look, in closing, before you get to your discussion, your group discussion, and you guys are also going to really kind of start honing in and zeroing in on, on kind of a, a group service project. I want to ask you, I want to leave you with this question. I want you to ponder this particular question. Are you willing to be inconvenienced for the glory of God? Are you willing to be inconvenienced to advance his kingdom? Are you willing to be inconvenienced to demonstrate Christ's love for you to others? Because if you are, if you make yourselves available, if you work together as a team, if your attitude is that you think about others more than yourselves, if you do every task, no matter how menial or how minor you think it is, with equal dedication, I guarantee you this. You experience God like you never have before. Let me close us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, first of all, I thank you. I thank you for this group that you have put together as a team. 
I know you've handpicked every single member of this group, but they're all different. They all have different shapes. Yet you have put them together and you will make them an effective serving unit to grow your kingdom, to continue the mission that Jesus started. And Lord, I just pray that uh, every single member of this group is willing to be inconvenienced for your glory. Lord, I pray for the rest of the discussion time that they will have tonight. I pray for, for hearts to be touched, minds to be changed if that needs to happen. I pray for renewed, just vigor and power within this group. Lord, we love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Have a great discussion time. And next week is week number six. We're talking about worshiping together.